Hi there, welcome to another painting tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna paint some Indian corn. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with my fine mist spray bottle. Just give a little spray. And now we're going to do our darkest values. I'm gonna take a size eight round brush that has a nice fine point to it. And let's take this Van Dyke Brown. You can also use like a burnt umber if you have that. And let's try to put in, just kind of block in some darker values. I want some along this edge of the corn. And I want to kind of put the brown, kind of outline the sketch that we have done. And I'm going to link this sketch below so you can just follow the link and then have a copy of it and then go ahead and transfer it onto your paper or if you're using a canvas, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to press down and then lift up so that I'm using that round brush to give me the shape of the leaf that I want. And I'm just doing that in the areas where the leaf is in shadow. So I'm pressing down where I want a thicker line and then lifting up on that pressure when I want a thinner line and when I want to make a point. All right, and then let's do that over on this side. So we're just looking at where the shadows are. Putting in those darker values to just block in the beginning of our painting. I'm going to put a dark line here just to separate those two leaves. All right, so now let's switch to another color. I'm going to keep with this brush and I have a beige color. This is kind of a mid-tone beige. And let's see if we can put that down on the corn leaves. Just carefully put that in again, press, use your pressure, alternating pressure to get the shapes of the leaves that you would like. I'm thinking about my brush, my um, paint consistency and how it's flowing, how much water is on the brush, how much water is on the paper. If the paint is flowing nicely. I have a good amount and I don't need to spray anymore. If my paint starts getting dry, I might add some more water. Okay. And again, press down, lift up. And if you need a little more water on your brush, go ahead and add that. Okay, so that's kind of a good block in of the corn stalks. And while it's still a little bit wet, let's add a lighter value, kind of a highlight. This is just a lighter tan shade. I'm just going to pop that in on the leaves to give a little bit of a highlight. Just give some more definition and dimension. And then I have this mossy green color, one of my favorite colors, beautiful moss green. And I want to add that to the leaves as well. It's just going to give me a little bit of variety and color. Add a little bit of interest so things are not just one dimensional. Sometimes if your paintings look kind of flat, it might be because you're using, you're not using enough um, variety of colors in your piece. I'm just going to put that kind of on the left side. I'm trying to keep that shape, that three-dimensional round shape. Okay, so I think that looks good for the stalks. Um, we might add some more detail later. Let's switch over to this round brush. This is a size 12 round brush and it doesn't have as much of a point, which is what you want. It's kind of a dull brush and that's going to help us get these little tiny beads for each corn kernel. And I want to start with a lemon yellow. Let's kind of feel the paper and see. I think it's completely dried up. So 
I'm gonna take a little spray and just put that on there. And then I'm gonna get that lemon yellow on my brush and let's put that in. So I wanted to use a large enough brush where you can see just each little stroke that I put down is gonna give me the entire shape of the kernel. That's gonna allow me to work more quickly, more efficiently. Because if you had, if you wanted to make this more of a tedious painting, you could use a small round brush and you know, go around each little circle with multiple strokes. But if you wanna do this more quickly, like I said, just try to use a larger brush. This one is a size 12. Okay, so just put in these little spots. And then I have a pastel yellow. Let's put that in there. So that's just giving us a variety of tone so that we have a little more interest, more dimension. We have our stronger mid-tone yellow, and then this is a lighter value. Okay, rinse off the brush, and then let's try to add some red. So I have this vermilion. This is just an orangish red color, very bright and beautiful. Let's see if we can put that in there. And for this one, if you go on top of some of the yellow, that's fine. It's gonna make kind of a orange because you know that the um, red and yellow is gonna make orange when you mix them together. So that's fine. It'll give you a little variety as well. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that I get all of these painted. Okay, so I might have put a little bit too much water on some of these. So before we move to the next step, you really want that to dry really well. So let's take a break, let that dry, and then we'll come back. So we've let that dry a little bit. Now let's switch to a round brush. This is a size six and this one does have a fine point and you want a fine point because you need a little more control for this next step. So for the next step, we're gonna take this yellow ochre, which is a darker value of yellow. And let's see if we can put it on kind of around these kernels and you're just kind of outlining them and giving them um, a little bit of a three-dimensional shape. And you can see how when you outline them with that darker value yellow, it's making them kind of pop off the page a little bit and look a lot more three-dimensional. So just go around and do that. And this could take you a long time to do. I'm trying to do it quickly, but if you want to really take your time, just go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and take your time. And I'm kind of doing it on the left side. You can make some of them, some of them I would go all the way around but some of them I would just kind of focus on the left side because that's kind of creating more of a cast shadow. That's really gonna make these pop. Okay, so now let's try that with the, with the red. So you want a shade that's a darker value red. I have this beautiful maroon, which is a convenience craft paint that I found at the craft store. So just look for a shade that's a dark, dark value of red. 
So like a maroon or maybe a magenta. Then we're just doing that same kind of thing, going around each little kernel, the ones that you painted in a red color. And you can see how that's really making them pop, making them look three dimensional and allowing it to come off of the page. Again, take your time, have fun with this. This could be a kind of repetitive, relaxing part of your painting process. And just enjoy it. And this is a great project for Thanksgiving. You could paint these and then hang them up and have your family and loved ones admire it. Or you could make these and put it on like a card and give it as a happy Thanksgiving. Okay, so now what we can do is I want to add some darker color kernels. So I'm going to go back to that blunt 12 round brush. And then I have this kind of a plum color. And I want to put some of these kind of randomly. And I'm just going right on top of the yellow and that's okay. Just kind of putting, whoops, I keep wanting to grab that black. So just space these out in different sections. Maybe if you have an area where you think there's a little bit too much yellow or certain kernels that you don't like the look of, you can just cover those up. Okay, and then kind of let those dry. All right, so we'll switch back to the size six round and let's get a darker value. I'm gonna take some of this burnt sienna and then I'm just gonna go around the kernels and this is a nice kind of a darker value. So it can be kind of like a shadow color and I just want to cover up some of these white areas. And I'm kind of keeping with those round shapes when I do this. But it's just adding a darker value, a little bit of shadow, getting rid of the white spots. Okay, and if at the bottom you wanted a little bit of a darker value, you could switch over to that raw umber or that Van Dyke brown and maybe put a little bit of a shadow, cover up the white spots with that darker color at the bottom because you might have a little bit more shadow there. Just cover up a little bit more of the white area because that white really catches the eye and the white is more, you kind of want the white to be where there's a highlight in the piece so you don't want it to be in the background where the shadows are. Okay, so take your time and go around and cover those up. Okay, and you could let that dry before the next step, but I'm just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna take this, um, this is a Payne's Gray, which is 
a, what I use for black a lot of the times, but it has a blue tint or undertone. And let's see if we can put that around the purple. Just carefully go around and outline your purple kernels with this Payne's Gray. And it's such a dark value that it's really going to make it make those areas pop and stand out. Okay, so that's just about done. Um, go ahead and take your time and make it look more professional if you would like, if you really want to be tedious with it. And for the final step, let's add a little bit of highlights. So you could take, I have a pale yellow. You could add some of that onto some of the kernels that are kind of a darker value yellow. And you can also take a little bit of white and just put that on as a little kind of a highlight on some of these kernels. You don't have to put them on every one. You could do maybe a row of them that are in highlight or just a smaller section that's highlighted. And then if you wanted to, you could take that pale yellow and you could do a little bit of a highlight on some of your corn stalks as well. And if you wanted to go back, you could add a little bit darker value because we lost a little bit of it on the corn stalk. So you can go back and just add those darker values to give that a little bit more of a definition. Just make it pop a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to call that done. That was a fun painting. I hope you give it a try. Pre please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If you love to paint, please subscribe and come paint with me twice a week. So thanks for watching. Bye.